Navajo Nation is the largest Native American territory in the country, sprawling across nearly 28,000 square miles and three states. It can be hard to find your way around, and not just because the lands are mostly rural. The majority of homes and businesses in Navajo Nation don't have addresses. Nellie Bowles went to meet the people trying to change that. Oh, I passed you. Okay. So I, I'm doing a U-turn. You're in mothership number two. Two buildings that look identical. You're in the one that's closer to the fire department. Navajo Nation is split into 110 chapters. Chapters are kind of like counties, but with more autonomy. And about 70 of those chapters don't have street names or numbered addresses. That adds up to at least 50,000 unmarked properties. We don't have fancy roads and streets that go north, east, southwest in a grid system. Our roads are going all over the place. M.C. Baldwin is a rural addressing supervisor for Navajo Nation, who lives in one of the chapters without addresses. We followed M.C. to a chapter called Burnham, a three-hour drive from the capital's central office, where he installed a house number on an elderly Navajo woman's home. She's getting the address number. So this is off of road 8805. Okay. So this tells us that you're actually part of the database now. The woman who lives here didn't want to be on camera, but her nephew spoke to us. How do you describe your address when friends come and visit? I go to the road, sit down there, and just wait for them to come by and, you know, then bring them up this way. That's, those are the ones that can't understand directions too good. <laughs> Why is it important for your auntie to have an address? For my auntie, you know, it, it's great for her, you know, because anything could happen, you know, because she's up in her age and they ought to be able to find us too, you know. Having an address isn't just about convenience. It's a safety issue. We need it for Navajo Nation. We need it for the grandmas and grandpas out there who need that for emergency purposes. Has anyone ever died because an ambulance couldn't find their house? Yeah, that has happened over the years. Where would they say they are? Where would they tell an ambulance to come? They're just going to immediately say, I'm two and a half miles from this particular chapter in this direction. And then it's up to the public safety personnel to, to navigate themselves to that location. But change is hard for everyone. And despite these safety concerns, some people in Navajo Nation don't want addresses. They like being off the grid and think the new signposts ruin the natural landscape. The traditionalist's first instinct, I guess, would be, why would you want to interrupt a nice skyline, a nice horizon, sunset? We're not here to tell the people what to think, what to do. However, we have a job to do. This one, was actually run over intentionally. The reason was it obstructed somebody's line of sight to see the bus coming off the highway so they had enough time to walk from the house to the bus stop. So that was the only visible perspective and the sign just happened to end up there. Once this is laid out, it'll tie us into the grid with the state through the county and we're on the map. You unify the community beyond the Navajo Reservation, beyond the county, beyond the state. You're no longer talking about Navajos, Anglos, Utes, whatever have you. You're talking about humans working together, integrated on a single system. Addressing at least 50,000 locations is laborious and expensive, especially in such a rugged place. It requires figuring out a numbering system, building a database of addresses, drawing a base map, and putting up signposts. And in the chapters that do have addresses, it's usually because there's someone like Sadie Dez. At times, it's frustrating. From the community, there was really no involvement. I was the only one working on this project. You know, I needed help. Sadie lives in Sheep Springs in northern Navajo Nation. Sheep Springs, unlike some other chapters, has running water, electricity, and other basic amenities. So it was able to find about $20,000 in its budget for mapping. At this point, they've put addresses on about 300 properties, which means they're three quarters of the way done. But to keep the project going in 2017, Sadie will now be volunteering her time. What will it mean when all of Navajo Nation is addressed? Ah, that would be so awesome. I mean, you know, we'll be all like on one page, but I don't know why some other chapters are not starting on this project. 
Maybe they don't have the people to do it. When do you think it'll be done? Maybe never. <laughs> Maybe never. I don't know. A lot of people, I guess, they don't want to be found.